Welcome to the presentation on PSRC's data and performance metrics. My name is Kelly McGurdy and I'm the Director of Transportation Planning here at PSRC. I'm joined today by Craig Hellman, PSRC's Director of Data, and Ben Bacenta, PSRC's Director of Regional Planning. During today's presentation, we will provide some background on the data and tools we use here at PSRC, and we'll talk about some of the improvements we've both made and continue to work on. All of this information is provided to lay the groundwork for the policy questions that may be addressed as part of the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan. Craig is going to talk about this information in greater detail in a moment, but we use a variety of data analysis tools here at PSRC to estimate and forecast future conditions. This includes population, jobs, travel patterns and emissions. We also monitor today's conditions such as trip behaviors, miles traveled and delays experienced by users of the system. The information we can provide from these tools is useful for decision makers as they respond to issues and plan for the future system and meeting regional goals and policies. We're going to spend some time today talking about performance metrics for the Regional Transportation Plan, which we update every four years. You'll hear us use the acronym RTP throughout the presentation which is essentially, and the RTP is essentially the transportation element of vision, our long range policy framework for the region. We are beginning the next RTP to be adopted in 2022, which will respond to the growth expected through 2050 and address the current and future transportation system needs and challenges. At this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Craig to talk about our data and tools in greater detail. Thank you, Kelly. As Kelly mentioned, PSRC has numerous models and analytical tools that were developed to answer key policy questions. We have four main models that provide information for the regional transportation plan that help us forecast regional population and jobs. That's the regional economic forecast in the upper left there, where people live and work, urban sim, how they go about their day, soundcast, and how their travel behavior affects air quality, the moves model. Urban Sim and Soundcast are integrated with each other so that changes in transportation supply can have an effect on things like housing choice and where employment is located. So Craig, um, I have a question for you about this framework of, for models and tools that we have at PSRC. It seems like it's pretty complicated. Um, how, how long have we had this group of models and have we always evaluated the regional transportation plan this way? Believe it or not, PSRC has had some version of all four of these models for decades. So to answer your question, then, yeah, we actually have had some version of all four of these for a long time. They've just had different names and have functioned differently. Um, we are always updating our models. Our current demand model is Soundcast. It's been in use since 2014. So it's first used for the 2014 Regional Transportation Plan update. And we first used UrbanSim for Vision 2040 way back in 2008. Uh, later in this presentation, we'll talk a little more about current improvements that we have either made or are working on for the 2022 Regional Transportation Plan. Next slide, please. The models at PSRC are built using real-world information that's collected from lots of different places, including our members. Things like travel behavior and housing choice are estimated from the Regional Household Travel Survey. Zoning, assessor's records, and building size and cost help us estimate where new housing and jobs will be placed in the future. Counts of trucks, bikes, people walking, riding transit, and driving in cars are all used to help us understand how well our models reflect observed behavior, also called validation, if you hear me use that word later on. And inputs like the transportation network, parking costs, fares, and tolls all help us figure out how people will travel and how much it will cost them to do so. Next slide, please. As I mentioned before, PSRC has four main models that are used for analysis in the RTP, and I'm gonna quickly talk about all four of them really, really briefly. Um, if you want more information about any of these tools, you can always check out our models and tools section on the PSRC website, or you can just contact me. My contact information will be at the end of the, of the presentation. Um, that way you can reach out and ask any questions you might have. The first model that PSRC runs is a regional forecast model. Its output is actually very straightforward. It gives us people, jobs, and households for the region out to whatever our horizon year is, which currently is the year 2050. PSRC works with our members and the State Office of Financial Management to vet our regional forecast before it's used in our plans at PSRC. The regional forecast is the basis for the level of growth as planned for under Vision 2050. 
Next slide, please. Urban Sim takes the regional forecast of people, households, and jobs and estimates where people will live and where jobs will be located. The inputs to Urban Sim are very detailed, include every parcel level information and zoning by jurisdiction for both today, but also for the future. Housing cost, availability of land for redevelopment, and allowable land uses are all key factors informing where future development can occur. The choice of where people live and work are also influenced by the transportation supply and costs from Soundcast, our demand model. Next slide. Soundcast is the model that provides most of the performance metrics that are used in the regional transportation plan. Soundcast also works at the parcel level. It gets all those parcel inputs from Urban Sim, and it actually works to simulate individual travel choices for people across the region using models estimated from the Regional Household Travel Survey. Although it operates at an individual level, care is always provided in the level of output that's used for analysis. This is due to the amount of data that's used to validate the performance of the model. In other words, how well does it match and replicate real world um, behavior? PSRC can generally provide detailed travel behavior at the city and regional center level and usually provides speed and volume forecasts for regional facilities. Craig, could I ask a question? Um, given that Soundcast is built on the estimated trip making of people and is very detailed as you're showing on this slide, um, and also it estimates the trip making of all kinds on different individual facilities, at how fine a scale and with what confidence can we report performance of the system? It's a great question. Regional models, and I'll, you'll hear me use that term a lot, I'll use the term regional in almost every slide. Regional models are really good at regional forecasts, but they're not intended to be used at the micro level. That level of analysis is generally performed for projects using tools that require very extensive inputs that are not available at the regional scale. One advantage of using a detailed model like this is it allows us to add things up to geographies, and I mentioned earlier, generally we like to stick at the place. So whether it's a regional growth center, a manufacturing industrial center, a city, that's the type of kind of geography that we feel most comfortable reporting our information out at. Next slide. All right, this is Kelly again. We use EPA's emission software called MOVES to estimate emissions from a variety of air pollutants, including greenhouse gases. We utilize the travel data from Soundcast, such as volumes traveling on different facilities at different speeds and by different types of vehicles, and apply the emission rates from MOVES to estimate total emissions. In addition to this system-based analysis, we also developed a four-part greenhouse gas strategy which analyzes greenhouse gas emissions beyond the current and planned transportation network and vehicle fleet as we just described. The strategy provides us an opportunity to analyze different scenarios for the future. For example, expectations of improved vehicle technologies out to 2040 or out to 2050. So the key limitations of our data tools, this is always one of the most difficult but important conversations to have related to regional modeling and really how we can use the information and how it should be used to answer questions and what we just can't answer yet. For example, we can't currently forecast race and income. We also know that safety is an important policy objective that also cannot be modeled at a regional scale. Crashes occur due to numerous circumstances or not inputs to regional travel demand models, and the behavioral reasons for many accidents are not part of any long-range forecast. If you can't forecast something into the future, we can't model it in terms of conditions changing. As noted before, regional models are really good at regional forecasts, but they're not intended for use at the micro level. That level of analysis is generally performed for projects using tools that require very extensive inputs that are not available at the regional scale. Greg, I have another question, um, and it's something we get quite a lot in um, people that are working with us as we develop these plans, and it's that um, We've, people are often asked, how well can these tools that we have show how the system is working for specific types of users, such as people of color or people with low incomes? Can our tools do that? Equitable outcomes are really important to understand, but unfortunately, in the current state of our forecasting practice, and this is not just true for PSRC, it's actually true for every MPO across the country, currently doesn't forecast race at the place level. So we're really limited on how much we can, can or cannot say about race or performance metrics. As an example, the state's Office of Financial Management, which provides population forecasts out for use for our GMA planning, they provide a forecast of race ethnicity. It exists at the state level. 
There is no MPO in the country that goes anywhere down even below the county level in terms of those. So it's really difficult um, to analyze anywhere in the country. So what we use currently are what we call geographic proxies. It's places that we currently know where people of color or lower incomes live today. And we use those to help understand possible outcomes. But I will say we're always working on improving our tools and we're committed to expanding our analysis toward the 2020 RTP. But unfortunately right now we're still limited in how much we can model related to race. This is where we work on a regional equity work program and off model analysis like displacement risk and opportunity mapping that can help round out this analysis. And Ben is actually gonna talk a little bit about that later in this presentation. Next slide. So we use our data and tools to develop metrics to evaluate the regional transportation plan and address adopted policies and the things the region cares about as Craig and Ben were just discussing. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Craig now to elaborate further on those metrics. So we thought we'd take you through some historic RTP metrics and then on to what we're currently up to. If any of you have ever looked at older PSRC RTP documents, you've likely seen these metrics. Things like vehicle miles traveled, delay, trips by mode and emissions have been standard outputs for the RTP for many years. These measures are generally provided at the county and regional scale, but by themselves don't paint a very complete picture of the outcomes of the regional plan. Next slide, please. Some of you have probably seen this table. It's been in our documents for a long time and will continue to be in our documents. It's basically a summarization of these kind of high level metrics that I was just describing but we realize that people want to know more about how the RTP impacts different people across the region. Updating the way we visualize data and what metrics we produce was a major focus for the 2018 Regional Transportation Plan and continues to be for this 2022 update. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, for the 2018 RTP, PSRC worked to expand the measures that we generally report, both the types of metrics, but as well as the way they're visualized to better explain the outcomes of the plan for people living and working in our region. Updated measures included access to frequent transit and jobs with a focus on per capita measures. PSRC also worked to ensure that all modes of travel were covered in our data summaries and attempted to look at equity across a wide variety of measures. We'll talk a little more about these performance measures today and how we plan to add, them, add to them for this update of the RTP. Next slide. So you've just been given a, a view of some of our previous work to evaluate how the plan performs against some standard metrics. Looking towards our current plan and areas of emphasis detailed in Vision 2050, let's talk about how our data and tools can better respond to key policy questions. These bullets on the slide are some of the primary issues that have been raised from both the PSRC boards but also members of the public. For example, the current RTP contains an integrated regional transit network how are we doing to provide multimodal access to that network? Are we providing a transportation system that serves all users? Are we improving access and mobility for people of color and people with low income? In the coming slides, Craig and I will be illustrating some of the ways our analysis tools can help to respond to these and other policy questions. So this slide actually shows output that was used in presentations so also in the document for the 2018 RTP. As Kelly just talked about, access to transit was one of the policy questions that we focused on in the 2018 RTP and will continue to focus on in this plan update. If you recall that table of numbers I shared a few slides back, our previous plan focused on one outcome, the amount of people using transit, not how many, not how many people actually have access to the transit network. In the 2018 RTP, in addition to transit mode share and ridership by operator, we added the number of people and jobs that were located near both high capacity transit, things like light rail, commuter rail, and bus rapid transit, as well as any form of transit. We did this for the counties and region, but also added in access to transit for people of color and people of lower income, so we could understand how access to transit differed for different people. We found this approach very useful in understanding the benefits of the plan across the region. Next slide. We've been working over the last year to collect additional data and conduct new research into the current transportation system. This includes updated information on our bicycle and pedestrian networks, which we hope to use to better support future system planning. In this example, we are illustrating the bicycle and pedestrian network as it connects to transit within a given area. In addition, we continue to make improvements to our modeling efforts. Related to access to transit, Craig's team has made some improvements that better reflect biking as a mode choice and integrated with the transportation network. 
Another example is the incorporation of shared mobility trips based on data obtained through our household travel survey and other drop-off modes to transit. Improvements have also been made in the model to better reflect the various types of transit throughout the region, not just buses, for example, but also rail and ferries. In addition to accessibility metrics, we know that general mobility with a focus on reliability is also of interest. For the 2018 RTP, we looked beyond our previous outputs of system-wide delay by roadway type, roadway type being freeways and arterials, and actually summarized delay for trucks, people and cars, and as well as people in transit. Instead of only using big, but somewhat hard to understand numbers like system-wide delay or vehicle miles traveled, we also shared the results on a per person basis to make it easier to understand. So instead of talking about the roughly 100 million miles per day that are driven on the region's roadways, we instead talked about how the average person drives 20 miles per day, down from a high of almost 25 miles per day in the late 1990s. We also gathered travel times for key corridors for both auto and transit so people could understand how travel across the region changes with the plan and investments. And as we did, and as we did with measures of access, we also tried to show the differences from mobility metrics for people of color and people of lower incomes. Next slide. Continuing with the theme of additional data collection efforts and research, we have collected a lot of information over the last year on various elements of the system, including for the first time an inventory of the signals on the regional network, a better understanding of our freight network, and an inventory of transportation demand management programs throughout the region, just as a few examples. We are continuing to pursue additional efforts to better understand the system, and we continue to work on our visualization tools to be able to share this information more broadly. For example, a map could include congested corridors and the presence of coordinated traffic signals, or the location of transit routes and the presence of transit signal priority. Our goal with this work is to provide better information for both regional and local planning. So in the 2018 RTP, we also looked at ways to highlight the way the plan supports regional centers and how that affects travel behavior in those places. At the time of the 2018 RTP, there were 29 regional growth centers and nine manufacturing industrial centers. For those of you who no might know, there are now actually 10 manufacturing industrial centers with the addition of the Cascade Industrial Center. When we looked at access at, to a high capacity transit network, we found that 93% of regional growth centers and 78% of manufacturing industrial centers were actually served by either existing or planned high capacity transit. One outcome of this access is that the share of walking and biking in transit is more than double in centers than what it is in the region. But as you can see by that big table of numbers on the right, and that's the benefit of watching this, you can pause and actually read all those numbers if you want. We found a lot of value in looking at results for each center, not just for all of them together. So that we could better articulate how even for centers, travel behavior varies across the region. In the 2022 RTP, we plan to share even more metrics beyond just mode shares by centers as well. Next slide. Here's an additional example of some of the tools and information we're working on, illustrating the functionality of showing data, not just at the regional or county level, but at a smaller, more usable scale. We want to provide this information both for our own use in regional planning here at PSRC, but also for our local agencies to view this variety of information on the transportation system to identify needs and opportunities, both from current conditions as well as the plan system. This is ongoing work. We are still in the midst of pulling all of this together, but stay tuned as we work, move forward towards the development of the RTP. As you've seen in the last few slides, um, analysis for the 2018 Regional Transportation Plan included performance measures for people of color and people with low incomes as compared to region-wide performance for a number of measures. Um, as part of the plan, we also included a specific equity analysis appendix to try to really highlight how people of color and people with lower incomes uh, benefited and were how they use the system. Um, since then, PSRC has continued to improve tools and data to help us understand equity as related to the region's transportation investments. Two key tools that will greatly enhance analysis of equity as we develop the 2022 RTP are our recent updates to our opportunity maps. Um, those can be seen in the lower left-hand corner which show areas that have relatively more resources than the regional average and how those and also those that have relatively fewer resources so you can see how transportation investments align with those areas and who's living in those areas the map in the center shows 
um, it's the concentrations of poverty um, attribute is checked. So we can look at how demographics differ around the region and how transportation investments serve or don't serve those areas. Um, similarly, we've also created a new displacement risk analysis tool that shows areas um, at greater risk of residential or commercial displacement based on current neighborhood conditions. Um, it's also worth noting that the draft Vision 2050 plan, which we expect will be updated or adopted rather this fall, contains an implementation action uh, for PSRC to develop a regional equity strategy, which will consist of data, policy guidance, and best practices to make equity central to PSRC's work, and also, very importantly, to support local comprehensive plan updates and other regional and local planning efforts. Um, our staff are currently scoping out a work program, but the timing will also support the development of the 2022 RTP. Similar to the other metrics described, here are some examples of information we provided in the 2018 plan illustrating the downward trend in a variety of air emissions, including the scenario work from our adopted four-part greenhouse gas strategy. We will continue to produce these metrics, but we are also working on improvements in the area of air quality and climate. Specifically, we've been called on in Vision 2050 to do more on climate. Our emissions work is primarily focused on on-road transportation. That is what our models are based on to estimate emissions from on-road on motor vehicles building from the transportation network and land use patterns now and into the future. Our new portfolio will be to develop what is called a climate wedge analysis, which essentially means that we will be looking at the full spectrum of regional emissions. We recognize that greenhouse gas emissions come from a variety of sectors, including electricity, industry, and other sectors, which are outside of PSRC's normal scope of work. However, we will work with our partner agencies to identify and track the potential for emission reductions from these other sectors, in addition to transportation and on-road mobile sources, to provide a more comprehensive look at the total inventory and produce a broader picture of how the region is addressing climate and working to achieve climate goals. And we also will continue to do regular monitoring of this progress, um, both within the four-year update cycle of the RTP, as well as on other timeframes. As mentioned earlier, safety is a topic that is not something we can analyze or forecast with our modeling tools, but it is an important policy issue in the region and in the state. The data shows that we are not making the progress we want to make to reduce fatalities and serious injuries, and we often are asked how does and how should the RTP address safety. We have been working to collect additional data, and you can see an example of this in the chart on the right, which identifies the various factors in play that contribute to fatalities and serious injuries on the transportation system. We will be holding a peer networking session on safety in July, bringing together perspectives from local government, the state, and hopefully some expertise from other areas to discuss this important topic. And we will continue to engage with the Transportation Policy Board as we develop the Regional Transportation Plan. We've provided a quite a bit of information in today's presentation, and to summarize, we are continuing to improve our data and analysis tools to support board discussions and decisions on the RTP, but also to support our local jurisdictions and agencies as they begin their comprehensive planning processes. We are working to improve our ability to address policy questions such as equity and access to transit, and to plan for one integrated transportation system for all users. We will be re-engaging with the board this fall to further discuss performance metrics of the RTP. In addition to the planned metrics, however, other work is also being done to assess progress towards outcomes identified in Vision 2050. And I'll turn it over to Ben and Craig to talk more about these. Ben? Thanks, Kelly. Um, so I would add that in addition to the tools, data, and analysis that PSRC will use for the RTP, um, staff have already begun conducting analyses and developing tools and resources in other areas. Um, one important one is a regional housing needs assessment that um, will be part of an action that's identified in Vision 2050 for PSRC, and that's to develop a regional housing strategy. And so that will look at the distribution of housing affordability and type um, throughout the region, and an assessment of what, how local jurisdictions and others are meeting the larger regional housing need both today and in the future. Um, we also are documenting best practices regarding stormwater management and the development of infrastructure and public facilities and how those relationships can help improve um, 
water quality and um, really address local needs as well as regional needs. Um, these resources, it's important to note, should be available on the same general timeline as the development of the 2022 RTP. So that data will be, be helpful as well as we develop the plan. So thanks, Ben. A, a key focus for the data team, and it's actually our entire data team, is to get all the information that we have in our models and databases at PSRC into the hands of planners and decision makers across the region. We want to push out more trends that are relevant to the work that we're doing on the RTP, and we're very interested in improving our data visualizations and greatly increasing our use of web-based tools to share information with our members. And with that, I think we can go to the last slide and wrap it up. So we hope you found this virtual presentation helpful, and we look forward to working with all of you on the Regional Transportation Plan. We will have these slides available to you via our website, and if you have any questions for any of us about anything that we talked about today, send us an email, and we'll be happy to help you. Take care, stay safe, and we hope to see you all again soon.